Alrighty, decided to do a second uh, live dev session for a... Oh, left repeat on. Sorry about that. Anyway, we decided to do a second uh, live dev session uh, for Sylph Project Miyagi, which is my uh, 2.5D, if you will, uh, sci-fi shoot-em-up based on Sylphid, a 1986 game arts title, Sylphid. Um, this time, uh, this is something I've actually been working on for for a few weeks now, actually. Uh, previously for the audio, for the audio itself, I've actually been using SDL. Um, if anyone's familiar with SDL, it's basically a uh, you know, the starting point for doing uh, OpenGL applications. Um, and it also has rudimentary sound support. Um, and by rudimentary, I mean you can play music, you can play sound effects, it'll handle, at least on my system, up to 32 channels simultaneously for, <coughs> excuse me, for playing sound. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even let you control stereo pan, uh, it does not support surround sound um, at all. It's just for very basic sound, so um, you know, outside of using a third-party engine or something, um, if you if you want sound in your game, particularly if you're using open source tools, excuse me, the only library I know of that's that's open source, you know, non-proprietary, uh, that's worth a crap, is actually called OpenAL uh, for Open Audio Library. Which is um, the syntax, you know, and the way it's set up, it's actually uh, intentionally made to mirror OpenGL. Um, it was originally it was originally developed by Creative Labs, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, also created the Sound Blaster uh, line of sound cards. Eventually, Creative Labs uh, ceased work on it, or at least on the open source version. And uh, I believe they still may be maintaining a proprietary version, which is if that's the case, it's kind of ironic. You know, it's called Open AL, so I'm not quite sure how you can call a proprietary product Open, but whatever. In any case, um, the original Open AL library uh, has been forked essentially, um, and the current uh, version that's actually still in play uh, on on open source systems, actually even not so much even on Windows and uh, OS X, you can actually. Shit, I think even on uh, Android devices, possibly, and iOS devices, I think, have some support for uh, the Open AL library. But the current version that's being used is actually called Open AL Soft, and uh, that's what I'm using here in Gambus uh, for some more advanced sound than SDL can afford. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, again, after a few weeks of work on this and a lot of frustration, I think I've gotten to the point where I can really start to play around. Uh, you can see some code on my screen here. I, I have it working to a degree where you can actually hear uh, a little bit of what it can do in game. Uh, still a lot that needs to be solved, and a little bit that needs to be solved. Uh, mostly, it's just a matter of implementation and then making it uh, really taking advantage of it in the code. Uh, currently, the only thing I have working with OpenAL is um, basically. Um, a couple, a couple of different sound effects um, for each ship. So, basically, a ship, uh, each individual ship in the game, each ship type actually uh, will have a different uh, velocity sound effect and a different thrust sound effect. Um, as you might imagine, let me light this. As you might imagine, the velocity sound effect, of course, is the effect which is played in. Basically, its gain or amplitude is uh, based on the actual speed of the ship. Um, so you could think of that, you know, as the sound created by it, you know, perturbing, or the friction created by it moving through a medium such as air. Now, granted, this is a sci-fi, you know, mostly in space shoot 'em up, uh, but we're not really going all BSG here. We're not even going, you know, BSG inside the cockpit only. Uh, certainly not 2001 Space Odyssey. This is more like uh, more like Star Wars, where despite the fact there is no medium to conduct the sound, you can still somehow hear sound moving through a vacuum. 
because it is a game after all, you know, it needs to be fun, it needs to sound good, it's not a simulation. Uh, so yeah, you can hear stuff in space. Um, but anyway, the other one is uh, audio actually based on the thrust. So the velocity, of course, is how fast the ship is moving in the environment, and the thrust is basically the, uh, you know, forward and lateral thruster output, uh, which of course in turn, using very simple Newtonian physics, affects the velocity ultimately. Um, so that should give a little bit of complexity to the way ships sound, because there'll be there'll be one you know very ris realistically portrayed 3D positional sound with Doppler uh, based on the ship's speed with you know one sound effect and then based on uh, the ship's thrusters using a second sound effect um, so I'm gonna you know I should probably just start off by running the game real quick uh, as you can see the very what what little I actually have working so far um, the code here is just uh, basically assigning, this is for the player ship, the SAO8, uh, this is just uh, assigning all the properties, the base properties for the velocity sound effect using OpenAL. Um, when you get to the start screen, you'll hear it like really, really loud. Uh, that's a subtlety I have not yet ironed out, so don't worry about that. I know it needs to be fixed. I know it sounds lame, so let's give it a run and see what happens. the uh, audio or video quality isn't too horrific here. Um, I actually downgraded my system recently. My server is now using my old workstation hardware, and my workstation is now using my old server hardware. So I need to upgrade my workstation. This frame rate may be shit, audio may be shit, I'm not sure. I'll have to check that after uh, the broadcast. Alright. Really loud right now. We go to a test area. Area 20 has no enemies, so that's a good test area. Got my gamepad. You know what? I'm actually going to silence the music right there. You can hear my ship very softly. You know, as it gets closer to the camera, it gets a little louder. It's farther away, a little quieter. I'm going to increase my speed here max speed. Should hear some stereo pan to the left, stereo pan to the right. And you'll notice when I relax the ship, uh, the amplitude decreases. Again, I, I have some code in there where based on, you know, the, the sum of the absolute value in, uh, individually of the x, y, and z velocities, <coughs> Excuse me. It um, it adjusts the gain of the sound effect uh, between a, a certain range of minimum and maximum range. So as you increase in speed, imagine again it's like air resistance. That's like the friction of the air moving across the uh, ship. Of course, there's no air, but whatever. Uh, it will increase the gain or the amplitude of the uh, sound effect. Testing that here, of course. Here, an enemy. I think this should still be working. I'm gonna generate an enemy real quick. We'll just do a flyby. You can hear that. Ooh. And uh, we'll create another ship here. Make myself invincible, he's gonna kill me. Let me just 
your M. He's very quiet, actually, to increase his gain. You need to create a base gain property for each ship's sound effect. Make the enemies louder than me a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to hear uh, the enemy ship sound effects. It's just much quieter than my own. Anyway, you get the general idea. So those sound effects created there are purely based on uh, three ships, uh, the, uh, the velocity of the ship, my ship, uh, enemy seven and enemy three. Uh, enemy three was the last one you saw a ruby on. Enemy seven was like a suicide diver, just some ship I made up that was not in the original Sylphid. Um, okay, okay, if I can remember what the hell I was doing, let's go to the code here. It's under the ship create procedure. So these are the audio properties for the player ship, and this is the audio properties here for ship 7, which is the suicide diver. Uh, I have not yet set the audio properties for either ship's uh, thrust, only their velocity, so I'll actually probably want to find a different sound effect, obviously, uh, for the thrust. Copy this code, use that sound effect, uh, the thrust sound effect, and then uh, keep working here. Okay, ship update. This is where it actually updates the um, the properties of the sound effects in real time based on the ship's position, uh, velocity, and thrust. Uh, this calculation here where it adjusts the gain is what I was telling you where base, based, on, based on what the ship's velocity is, it actually manually adjusts the gain. So it's not just a matter of how close the ship is to the camera that determines its amplitude but it's also just how fast it's going. So for example, if uh, a ship is completely stationary uh, with respect to the stage, its uh, velocity effect will, will basically be zero. Um, and of course it's not going to be making any sound if it's not moving. Um, and then louder as it moves faster. Um, whereas uh, this is the code that controls actually the sound effect uh, properties based on the thrust or how hard the ship's attempting to move um, you know, in, a, in, a, in a certain direction, uh, which is going to use a completely different sound effect. Let's see. Okay, I need to implement the range calculation down here actually based on the thrust. So I'm actually going to cut this code out here. Put it down here. Right now the thrust has a static gain. It needs to be dynamic based on range. Okay, so this is setting the um, gain or the overall amplitude of the thrust sound effect um, by taking the absolute value of the ship's thrust on the x, y, and z axes, the sum of those three values, 
and it's converting those between 0 and minimum value. This range function here is a custom function that I programmed. It's codes elsewhere in the module. It's going to convert the um, some of the absolute values of the thrust on each of the three axes for the ship to between the value between zero, the minimum one, and probably the same thing here. Some of the absolute values of the thrust, but instead of it being the current thrust, it's actually going to be the thrust max. Yes, yes, parentheses correct. So it's between zero and. You know, just for convenience, put the same code in here, except. Well, why is it doing that? It's just annoying. Gambus is in a state of flux, just a touch right now, where I'm not sure what's going on with Benoit, the developer, but things are a little bit wonky right now in Gambus. It's a bit annoying. So, anyway, range here, X, Y, Z. Okay, maximum range is going to be thrust X max, thrust Y max. Rest Z max. Okay. So the values, absolute value of the sums of the thrust on each axis, which goes between zero, which are between, right, of course, zero, and then again the absolute values of the thrust max for each axis. And then the minimum two and maximum two, those are going to be the values that that range is actually uh, converted to that are going to be assigned to the gain for the uh, ship's audio effect. So the minimum for thrust, of course, that would be actually zero. If they're not thrusting at all, there should be absolutely no thrust sound effect. So we're going to make that zero, and then the maximum gain at full thrust. Let's leave that at 10 just to see what the hell it sounds like. And just so we can hear what this sounds like, I'm actually going to temporarily set the velocity gain to zero. So we'll comment out that line, paste the line again, take out this whole function, and we're just going to make that zero. So just for the time being, for testing, just so we can hear the thrust sound effect um, by itself, uh, not being interfered with by the velocity sound effect, which you heard when I played the game a second ago, I was just temporarily setting the velocity sound effects gain to zero. Of course, you're not going to hear any sound here at all because um, because of this. Um, I'm actually not assigning a thrust sound effect yet, so it'll be null and it will completely skip that and it won't play shit. <coughs> so now that we hopefully got this code straightened out, it's gonna bookmark up a bit, go back to ship creates, we're gonna do, okay, go back to the player ship, I'm gonna copy this code here, this is what defines the um, velocity sound effect for ship zero or the player ship, I'm gonna copy that, and this time we're gonna set the, uh, uh, change it to the thrust, so I already have these audio sources defined, they already load their samples, <coughs> so it's really just a matter of renaming the uh, properties here. So just rename all these. Thrust instead of velocity. And audio buffer thrust. So audio buffer velocity, that's a the buffer is the actual sound data, the waveform essentially that's loaded from file, which I have loading elsewhere in code already. A lot of the work up to this point was foundational, um, just getting shit to work before shit works, if that makes any sense at all. Okay, audio buffer thrust. These are all the audio buffers. I divided them, I created basically separate arrays uh, to contain multiple sound effects based on class or type and just uh, preface them with audio buffer. So you can audio buffer boss, bullet, computer, you know, you're in ship's computer talking to you, like when your engines are damaged or whatever. 
damage, debris, debug, detonation, explosion, field, gooey, impact, laser, parachute, repair, ricochet, sizzle. Sizzles when people get cooked. That's a fun group of sound effects. When someone ejects and then they get shot with an energy weapon, they make a little sizzle sound. Anyway, and a squish sound. Okay, thrust. I'm screwing around. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? All right. I'm going for thrust zero. Hopefully there's actually an effect assigned to that or we're not going to hear anything or we're going to get some kind of error when running it. <laughs> I'm actually going to check that real quick. I'll do a buffer thrust. See what that actually uses. I think that's under audio initialize. I'll have to check. You initialize, we're looking for, okay, yeah, this is where it loads all the buffers into the arrays. Uh, these are actually all the, the sound effects themselves that are being loaded into each index for each array. So anyway, let's find the thrust one. I think they're in alphabetical order. Here it is. Okay, we got thrust one. Okay, cool. So apparently I've already taken care of that. It's always good. <coughs> I'm going to give this a run, see if it crashes. Full screen it for fun. Alright, maximize it. Anyway. Needs to be tweaked. That's crazy. <laughs> Apparently, my, my range function needs a, a bit of touch up work. It's either on or off, it sounds like. It's either loud as unholy hell or it's completely silent. Let's see what my thrust values are. God, almost nothing. One. Okay. Well, cool. It's better than crashing, but shit. <laughs> oh. Interesting to see exactly what's going on here. Position velocity. Okay, these are the same. That's fine. It's the update procedure with the range. Uh, ship update and procedure with the uh, range. Calculation that's jacking it up. Hmm. Interesting. Take a look at that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to lower the pitch on it too. It's like pretty high pitch. I'm going to cut the pitch in half. Alright. Back to the ship update procedure. Second part here. And this range function right here is what's more than likely not working, my spider sense tells me. Figure out what the hell's going on. Okay. So the gain. N value is between zero and ten. Okay, absolute value. The sum of the absolute value of thrust x, y, and z is the value, starting value, which goes between zero and again. Absolute value of thrust x, y, and z max. That's nuts. I actually need it. I actually like it to print out 
this value here so I can see it in the debug window and figure out what kind of crazy ass large numbers it's tossing on screen. And if I could it just really seemed on or off though. You know what? I am gonna print that. I wanna see what the hell this thing's doing. I'm gonna copy this whole range function here and just print it out. If I can get my parentheses right. That'd be awesome. I'm not gonna count them either. That should be right. I think. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so I'm gonna run this again and, uh, whoops. That would be stupid. Print. Okay. It's actually gonna print out these values. I'm gonna silence this, actually. Just temporarily. It's loud as shit, I don't wanna hear it. I'm gonna set the gain to like zero. Just like uh, the velocity gain. Right. Okay, so uh, we shouldn't hear any annoying sounds, and it should actually print this range value based on your thrust. It's essentially going to print the value that's being assigned to gain for the thrust sound effect. Uh, down shit. Really? How is that exactly? God damn it. Is it even a syntax error? What am I missing? Programming so much fun, holy crap. Imagine if you had to do this in a text editor and then compile it and you didn't know it was screwed up until it either didn't compile or just died while you were running it. this like hour after hour after hour day after day week after week year after year forever <laughs> there are worse things to do Always excellent Morty. God help me. Okay. Okay, so we got zeros. Printing out zeros for the gain value for the thrust conversion using the range function. Okay, I give it a little bit of movement. We're getting 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Okay, so it's giving me good values. Essentially it goes all the way up to four, five the max I can get on this up to eight to increase my speed. So that shouldn't affect it. It doesn't. So this is raw thrust. Five, five. Left and right, balance. Okay. This will give me values between zero and eight. You know what? I think I just figured out what it was. I did. This is a problem I ran into before. If you're using OpenAL, and you, you're not using it for playing music, you're using it for actual positional audio, meaning, you know, Dolby 5.1, stereo pan, what have you, anything other than just playing something equally on both speakers, like a GUI sound effect, right? Um, <laughs> the audio sample uh, cannot be multi-channel. It has to, it can't be stereo, for example, it has to be mono. If you attempt to do 3D positional sound, loading a sample or a buffer that has two channels that's stereo, it will ignore. OpenAL will ignore all your positional stuff, all the Doppler, everything, it will ignore it and just play it like it's a like it's a song, you know, in a media player. So I think that's actually why that sound effect for thrust was loud as hell. Uh, it's because my dumbass um, 
didn't down mix it to mono, so let's do that. Go into the source directory, this is where all the actual game data is that's live, if you will. I'm going to go into sound. Trying to find the sample. I'm going to have to go through and down mix every one of these. And hopefully, uh, I have to load Audacity to actually down mix this. Hopefully, that's not going to jack up my settings for <laughs> this broadcast with respect to audio devices and audio device exclusivity and locks and things. So, anyway, so we got Velocity one. Okay, Thrust one. Velocity one, that, that was the one before that I could not get working, and part of the problem was because it was two channel and I had to down mix it. So, Thrust one. I'm going to open this with Audacity, and I'll bet you it's going to be a stereo track. Hopefully everything will work, even with me opening it in this program. I'm actually going to check that. Mic test. Okay, good. Cool. And there it is. I'll be damned. Sometimes it feels good to be right, especially when you know it's going to solve your problem easily. So anyway, stereo track to mono. I'm going to export this crap back on top of itself. Good, make it so. Lovely, lovely. Okay, cool. Um, so we just uh, took this from stereo to uh, mono, and that should alleviate your problem. So our range here is actually good. So we can get rid of our debug print statement here to check out the values. Now that we know it's doing pretty much what it wants to do, we're going to take out our debug gain setting that sets its uh, amplitude to zero just so we're not annoyed to death. And we're going to uncomment the original code which was in fact correct. It's just we were using a stereo sample so it was ignoring all our awesome open AL 3D positional stuff. And save that and give it a run. See what happens. By the way, if anyone watching this has any cool ideas for quotes um, to put at the beginning of the game, uh, let me know. <coughs> Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, email, wherever. Evergues.com slash games, whatever. Numbingly loud. Okay, time to silence the music. Test thrust. Oh, huh? seems better. It's a crappy sample. I need to figure out a new sample. Maybe it's because I increased the pitch of it and I shouldn't have. Uh, but basically how far I push up on the stick, which determines how much thrust is being exerted on any of the two, or the three, three axes. Determine the gain of the uh, thrust sound effect. <coughs> then of course on top of that is the whole, you know, distance of the emitter, which in my case is the player ship, in this case is the player ship uh, and the camera. Uh, the distance between those two things. And Doppler, of course, is determined by the velocity relative to the velocity of the emitter uh, relative to the velocity of the camera. Uh, you're not going to hear too much Doppler here. That's really when someone flies by you. Like that. Um. It kind of sounds like engine thrust. I don't know. I have to do a lot of effect editing. Right now, at, at this point, the sound effects with respect to open AL, I haven't really chosen or edited you know, the final set of effects that are going to be implemented. It's more or less uh, placeholder sound effects uh, in order to get the code base right to actually support uh, you know, the, the depth or complexity of audio that I want to have in the game. 
That's awesome, man. Shit, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out here. God. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna exit out. Now I'm gonna re-enable the velocity um, effects here that I uh, muted for debugging purposes to isolate the thrust sounds. Um, I'm gonna re-enable that. And then delete that. I should really comment it out, but you know what? No. Okay, so now we're going to have a combination uh, for the SA-08 of both the velocity and thrust sound effects. Let's see what that's all about. I'm probably going to wrap it up pretty quick after this. Just because I don't want to bore people to death, those that are actually listening to this kind of crazy stuff. Um, and I don't know, I've had a little bit of a long night. I don't know if anyone is following my Facebook. My kid locked me in my basement. He's like three years old. He's supposed to be sleeping. He got up, locked the basement door. My office, this was my basement. I went up to check on him, couldn't get upstairs, tried to tell him how to unlock it, couldn't do it, tried to pick the lock, tried to slide a card in there to, to push the bolt, couldn't do it. Ended up literally having to destroy the basement door uh, by throwing elbows in, into it and kicking it. Um, so tonight, you know, between programming and breaking down doors and trying you know, to get my kid to have a good night's rest. It's been a bit crazy. Oh, I'm gonna take that out. It's nuts. All right. Anyway, let's see what it sounds like. God, it almost looks like someone like ice skating, like turning really hard. You know, on the ice. Silence the music, that would be good. Yeah, the thrust sound is way too crunchy. I need to lower the pitch and probably lower the gain a touch. It overpowers the velocity sound effect, which is like quite subtle and nice. does sound jet fighter like I mean if it sounds even close you know in the like farthest you know depth of my imagination if, it's, if it sounds even close to being proper that's good because <laughs> you may just placeholder sound effects you know completely improperly chosen improperly tweaked and edited so shit this is good good start die glory die Missiles. Now I will die. Oh, fuck it. Go out with a bang, right? Miss Acolyte. Terrorist bastard. Oh! Oh! His AI is obviously not finished. I need mean, to take apart one piece of it. Shouldn't have put lasers. The pea shooter's not doing much. Man. Yeah. 
Uh, my guns are gone. I lost both cannons. The best I can do is suicide with Kamikaze's ass, and I can't even get close enough. Which means it's a matter of time. Dead man walking. Oh shit. Oh! And that was it. That's all she wrote, folks. Alright, anyway, I uh, appreciate y'all staying with me. Um, you know, ho hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hit me up uh, on Twitter at 8Virtues. Uh, my website is 8Virtues.com slash games. Um, you can hit me up on YouTube at Vosk... I can't even say it. Vosk Corp Bet Mani. It's V-A-S-C-O-R-P-B-E-T-M-A-N-I. Uh, my email address is kevinfishburn at 8virtues.com, or if you can't remember that, just shoot an email to sales at 8